Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at an interesting mini PC from B-Link. This is called their ME. And when I lift the cover off, you can see what makes it interesting. So what we've got here are six NVMe slots on board. And this is designed to run as a NAS server. So you can install Unraid on it, which is what we'll demo in this video. But you can do other open source NAS solutions along with your favorite flavors of Linux. And it also comes with a Windows license if you prefer to run Windows on it. It is powered by an Intel N150 processor. This is kind of a lower end chip. And this is a good matchup for someone looking for a good amount of storage in a compact size that can run some server applications via Docker or however else you want to run them. And in this video, we're going to take a look and see how this PC performs at that task because from a price standpoint, it does cost a little bit more than many of the cheap mini PCs we often see powered by this Intel N150. So this is definitely geared for folks looking for a small home server. And we're going to jump into this in just a second. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that B-Link sent us to the channel free of charge. However, no other compensation was received. They have not reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And of course, all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this little NAS is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at around $329 on Amazon at the moment. That is if you click on the coupon button that you'll see on there. This one came bundled with storage and the storage bundles apparently all include name brand crucial nvme drive so this drive in slot four was pre-installed on the one that they sent me but all of the retail units will also have crucial storage i've been buying crucial memory since the late 90s i've been very happy with it so it's good to see that they do at least include some name brand storage on these especially if you're going to be using it as a server and the other drives here I put in myself a little bit earlier. What I like about the design here is that the drives go in as you see them here. So this is the, uh, the bottom of the NVMe essentially, and the chips are uh, touching into a heat pad that then connects to the big heat sink here in the middle. And as you'll see in a few minutes, this device keeps my drives a lot cooler than the same drives I was using in the GMK Tech NAS we looked at a few weeks ago. It's significantly cooler, and I'll demo that a little bit later in the video here. So very good on the thermals, at least for the drives. Now, the way these work is that slot four here is a 2X PCI Express slot. The rest of them are 1X. So you're not gonna get crazy throughput here with these hard drives. Now that crucial drive in slot four was only getting about 1.3 gigabytes per second on reads and writes. And again, that is the 2X PCI Express slot on this device. This drive, if I popped it out of here and put it into any other regular larger modern PC, would perform a lot better. This is actually a PCI Express 4 drive that it comes with. But given the hardware limitations here, this is about the speed that you're going to get at the max out of the fastest port that you've got to work with. The rest of these will be running at half the bandwidth because they are only PCI 1X slots. And of course, the speed of each drive will vary based on the drive's internal performance. But on a NAS device like this, most of your throughput is getting pushed out via the network. Now this has 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports, two of them. So in a realistic scenario here, and you'll see a, a little test of this in a little bit, uh, you will get only about 200 to 250 megabytes per second over the network max, given the bandwidth limitations of the onboard ethernet. So there's plenty of disk bandwidth to work over your network, but I wouldn't rely on this for uh, internal throughput if you wanted to use this like a PC. There are certainly better solutions for getting a lot more performance out of your NVMe drives. Now, as I mentioned, this does have the Intel N150 on board. It also has 12 gigabytes of RAM, but that RAM is soldered on the motherboard. They do say it is crucial RAM, so decent RAM, but it is not upgradable. Again, limiting the uh, usefulness of this device, I think, to mostly network storage and network server kinds of use cases in the home. Now, it does have an Intel Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card on the front. It's an Intel AX101, so it supports Wi-Fi 6. So if you don't want to use the Ethernet, you can go wireless, provided your NAS distribution supports that. Very nice case, as you can see here. It is plastic, so it doesn't have that metal feel that a lot of the other B-Link PCs have. 
but it does have a good amount of ports for what you might want to work with here. So on the front, you've got your power button, and then you have two 10 gigabit per second USB ports, a USB Type-C 3.2 port here, and a USB-A that also runs at that 10 gigabit speed. On the back, you see there's a plug for power because the power supply is actually integrated into this contraption here. This is a 45 watt power supply. You don't need more than that for something like this. And we'll take a look and see what its consumption is in a minute here. And then you've got a USB 2 port for attaching a keyboard or something, your two ethernet ports, and then you've got an HDMI output. Like other N150 mini PCs we've looked at, this can output 4K 60 video to an external display. So again, if you wanted to use this as a PC or have it be a PC in one function along with running some home server apps, you can totally do that. It does come with an activated version of Windows 11 Pro out of the box, so you can boot it up and use it like a Windows PC. Earlier, I did test it with the latest version of Ubuntu, and that worked fine too. It was able to boot up and detect all the hardware properly, so you could run it as a desktop with some server apps running in the background, or of course, install a server operating system on here to get that going. It is pretty much an OS agnostic device. Why don't we boot it up now and see how it's working for me with Unraid. What I did a little bit earlier is I took all the drives out of my GMK tech in here and just put them all in this thing and then attached my external USB storage array. And to my surprise, everything just came up and it just transferred right over to the new hardware like nothing happened. It was a very easy transition moving my Unraid installation from one thing to the other. I've done a bunch of Unraid videos already, so definitely check those out, but I am very pleased with how easy it was to move to different pieces of hardware. So let's boot it up now and see what we got. All right, so I'm currently up and running here with my current Unraid situation. Now what I've got running here is the B-Link Mini PC with five NVMe drives installed. Four of them I took out of my existing GMK Tech box and plopped them in here. And then I took the drive array that I was using with my GMK Tech box, which has four desktop four terabyte drives installed, and I plugged it in via USB. And then of course, to boot everything up, Unraid has you use an external drive. So when I got this whole concoction working, it all just came up and it very easily transitioned from one piece of hardware to another. Although I suspect the motherboards on these are very similar because they're both running with the same N150 processor. Now I did have one issue, which is related to this USB-C port here and this particular drive array. This drive array and this USB-C port do not like each other. And initially the B-Link did not see the array at all. And then it finally did see it when I moved everything over to the other 10 gigabit USB-A port and that got everything recognized. However, when it came up, my parity drive was no longer working, although my data drives are okay. So I think it's just related to the drive controller on this thing versus the port not being good. This uh, array here is also kind of a USB hub in that it's got an HDMI output and another USB-C pass-through. So that could have been why it wasn't good, but I'm not liking this right now, just given the fact that I had a parity drive failure. So what I'm likely going to do is get a couple more NVMe drives now that I've got two more ports on this one versus what I had on this one and try to go completely solid state here. Currently I have only about nine terabytes or so on my media server, so it's conceivable I could maybe make it work here. Now as far as the maximum storage is concerned, each of these NVMe slots on here can take a four terabyte drive max. So in Unraid, what that would mean would be 20 terabytes of storage and four terabytes for your uh, parity drive. So there's a good amount of storage potential on here if you go to the max, but you can piece things together over time as well. Just know it's not hot swappable. You do have to shut it down before you swap drives in and out of it. Now at the moment, there are five NVMEs installed on here and sitting idle on Unraid with a couple of Docker containers loaded in memory and not really doing much. I'm only consuming about 18 to 20 watts of power according to my kilowatt on the floor over there. So that's pretty good from a power consumption standpoint. I wouldn't consume all that much more with another drive in there. Certainly if you're writing to it frequently, that would give you a little bit of a bump in power consumption, but by and large, it's pretty efficient, I think, especially given that these things generally sit idle uh, throughout most of the day or just very barely get any kind of 
hits on their processor. But what has impressed me so far is how much cooler my very inefficient NVMEs are running on the B-Link here versus the GM K-Tech that I pulled them out of. So for example, the cache drive that I use for my drive array here is an old WD 500 gig NVMe drive. Right now it's running at about 50 to 51 degrees Celsius. It kind of hovers between those two temperatures. On the old GM K-Tech box, same drive, it was idling at 69 degrees Celsius. I was constantly getting temperature warnings, even just doing basic writes to it. So this is definitely an improvement. The two Sabrent rocket drives were also running a lot hotter before. So 69 and 65 degrees, again, idle on the GM K-Tech. Here you can see they're both running also at about 20 degrees less Celsius. Certainly they do have a temperature bump when you write to them, but the write temperature I'm finding is about what the idle temperature was on the other one here. So that big heat sink does seem to be doing a pretty good job, at least keeping the drives cool. But unfortunately it's N150 processor does not keep itself as cool. So when I was running the 3D Mark Time Spy stress test in Windows, we got a failing grade of 83.4%. So what that indicates is that under heavy sustained load, you lose about 16% of the processor performance. And you don't have much to start with when you've got an N150 processor here. So this is not gonna be something I would recommend for very CPU intensive server tasks. It's going to be best for bursty kind of stuff that you might do with some Docker containers running web applications or media serving or that sort of thing. All right, let's take a look at how it is performing so far. So right now I'm playing a movie back through Plex and what I'm doing here is hardware transcoding a 4K Blu-ray down to something that I can play on my laptop screen, including having to do some HDR tone mapping. And as you can see, we've got hardware transcoding here working properly. And our CPU utilization here is pretty minimal. We're in the 18% range here. So we're able to probably fit a few more streams in there. From a power consumption standpoint, we're up to about 26 watts playing back this movie. But so far, all is good. And that movie is actually streaming out of the drive array here over the USB into the server here for processing. So it seems to be performing the same as my GMK tech box did. Now, in order to get hardware transcoding to work on Unraid, you do have to add a device to your container setup at slash dev slash DRI to map the hardware transcoding to the Intel processor. You do that by clicking on add another port variable or device here, clicking on uh, device and then having it point at dev DRI and you can give it a name of whatever you want. If you don't do this, you don't get hardware transcoding, so it is an extra step that you have to go through on Unraid. So let's take a look at throughput now. I've got my MacBook Air here with a two and a half gigabit ethernet adapter writing data to the Array's cache drive. That's an NVMe that's installed into one of the PCI 1X ports. And as you can see here, we're writing out at 260 megabytes per second, give or take. Our reads are a little bit less here. I think it might just be a function of the drive that I'm using, but by and large, this is the kind of performance that I would expect north of 200 megabytes per second. And this is why you really don't need much more on the PCI bus because you're really only gonna get about 200 megabytes and change, at least with this type of configuration. If you had 10 gigabit ethernet, it'd be a different story, but there you get an idea as to what kind of throughput you can expect, at least sequentially. And I'm gonna slide over here and just show you the temperatures here. So that drive's been writing now for the last couple of minutes and it's running at 61 degrees Celsius. Again, that drive runs pretty hot, but this was close to the idle speed before. So I'm now getting much better temperatures with the larger heat sink that is in the B-Link here. And in case you're curious, running this test, I'm getting about 25 watts of power consumption out of the B-Link NAS as it is cycling through that test. So I think if you're looking for a fun self-hosted server that can store a ton of data in a very small amount of physical space, this might be worth considering. I like the fact that the power supply is all integrated. It is very clean on a desk. And if you're using Unraid and you've got all six of those slots populated with four terabyte drives, you can get yourself about 20 terabytes of useful storage. So there's a lot of room to grow on here. I do have some reservations about what happened with this particular 
driver ray and that USB-C port. They just did not like each other. I'm rebuilding my parity drive right now. So I think my next task is going to try to get all the stuff off of here into here and have a nice clean setup here. So I've got to go hunt around and see where some of my NVMEs are located and what I can reassign because I do have some higher capacity ones that are not being used to their full capacity and they might do better in here. So I'm going to keep experimenting with this. I've got about nine or 10 terabytes that I'd have to house on here. So I think it's actually feasible to be able to get this to work as a standalone. And having two more slots versus the GMK Tech does make that a possibility if you want to go all solid state. I like the efficiency here, both from its power standpoint, but also how cool it keeps the NVMEs. And the cooling fan on this is very, very quiet. Certainly a lot quieter than this drive array that's sitting on here, clunking around with those spinning drives along with those fans blowing. So if you are maybe looking to put this in the office with you, I don't think it's going to be all that distracting. So it's a nice little device here and I think a lot of fun. I just got to figure out how I'm going to reconfigure my server now, but that might be the subject of a future video. That'll do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.